We have a major trade report. According to multiple NBA insiders, they recently revealed what the Knicks plans are moving forward and if they're going to make a trade at the trade deadline. They also helped reveal what are the Knicks' main trade assets at this point in time. We're going to break down all of these latest reports and so much more today. But before we get started, guys, about 55% of you watching this video right now are not subscribed to the channel. We are on a mission to try to get to 20,000 subscribers, and we could really use your support. If you enjoy content like this and you like daily Nick updates, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button because it could really support all the great content that we're creating for you. And now, let's get started. Multiple NBA insiders help explain the future moves that the Knicks are looking to make. The New York Knicks right now hold a regular season record of 8-6. and six. We are hovering around 500. And I think I speak for everyone when I say we expected the Knicks to look like a better team than their record would indicate. Now, they started the season with a number of injuries. Landry Shamit out. Press the Chua, out. Mitchell Robinson, out. But it didn't matter for New York because they still found a way to win. And over the last few games, they have looked like a better team. They have started to move the ball, move themselves. And in the process, their offense is starting to look beautiful. But there is one thing that can derail all of this. If the Knicks lose more games and they continue to hover around 500, the Knicks will be forced to make a major trade in order to rectify whatever issue we have and make us a better team. Make us the team that we were supposed to be this season, a championship contender. And according to SNY's Ian Bagley, he recently reported that if the Knicks struggle and they hover around 500, the Knicks might be more open to making a move. Let's break down Bagley's latest report here. According to him, the big question to me is if the Knicks can continue to wait a month or two for Robinson to return. In a perfect world, the Knicks stack wins over the next few weeks. Robinson comes back healthy and bolster the rotation. But things are rarely perfect in the NBA. The Knicks weren't put together to hover around 500. So if these struggles continue, the team could be more apt to make a move. But I get the sense from conversations over the past few weeks that the Knicks are not in any rush to make a trade. The team is obviously incomplete at the moment. Achua and Robinson are out. Landry Shamit is still rehabbing his dislocated shoulder. And if Shamit can make it all the way back, I still believe the Knicks will strongly consider re-signing him. Shout out to Bagley for giving us the following information about the Knicks and their potential future moves. I absolutely believe this report here. If the Knicks lose games and they continue to hover around 500, they're going to be forced to make a move. We're not a 500 team. Look at our roster. That roster is not a 500 roster. We are built to win championships. And if our team doesn't look like that, and our record doesn't indicate that, then Leon Rose and this Knicks front office will make another move and they'll get another player on this team to help us where we need help the most. And right now, if you're looking at the team, the biggest need for this Knicks roster is help on the defensive end of the floor. Because when we're inside, inside the paint, we still have problems with other opposing guards or other players going inside, attacking us inside, passing the ball around, getting backdoor cuts, or Euro-stepping around Carl Anthony Towns and still getting to the rim. That same level of fear that we used to impose in other opposing players just is not there this season. Carl Anthony Towns doesn't do that. Penetrators are aggressive inside, and they either find an open cutter or an open player in the wing who's open for a three. And if we're allowing open three-point shots, that's going to be a recipe for disaster. And as I said to start the show, the Knicks are injured right now. We are missing Preston Achua, Landry Shamit, and Mitchell Robinson. And no help is coming for several weeks. That means if in December, the Knicks are still hovering around 500 and we don't look like a championship team, we are going to make another trade. Now, you might be asking yourself, if that's the case and the Knicks are going to make another trade, what trade assets do they have available right now that they could utilize to get another player on this team? Well, shout out to James L. Edwards of The Athletic for giving us the following information. According to him, he first breaks down who is not going to be available in any type of trade talks. According to him, when you really dive into it, given the financial restraints on the roster, 
the investment in certain players. And if we're being honest, the relationships, there aren't many moves to make. Jalen Brunson, Carl Anthony Towns, and OG Ananobi aren't going anywhere. I want to make sure we all understand that. And that's clear. Jalen, Cat, and OG mean something significant to this team. And they are not going anywhere. They're not going to be traded. They're going to be members of this organization for as long as possible. Just want to make sure we clear all of that up. As for Mikel Bridges, even if his weird season continues, the organization gave up way too much to get him and move on within a year. I can't see Josh Hart being moved either. The best teams have players like Hart on them. To summarize, the entire starting lineup is not available for a trade and likely never will be available for a trade. I know, breaking news, right? But that begs the question then, what are the trade assets that the Knicks have available right now if a player that they like becomes available and they want to trade for them? Well, Edwards helps to answer that question as well too. Robinson and Achua feel like the most likely trade candidates. However, this team is struggling defensively. And Robinson is by far the best interior defender on the roster. And Achua might be next. It still feels more likely that the Knicks are going to roll with what they have this season. Although, a Robinson trade wouldn't surprise me. Yet, if this team just continues to trade wins and losses for the next two months, it's hard to envision a world where they don't do something. The only other players that are on the roster that I could see being of interest to rival teams are Miles McBride, who I don't see being moved because he's a good player and has such a team-friendly contract that the team couldn't even get back anything significant if he's traded alone. Precious Achua, Mitchell Robinson, and Miles McBride. Those are your trade assets at this point in time if you're looking to make another move at the deadline. But to an extent, Deuce McBride is not available either because even though the Knicks could technically trade him, they don't want to trade him. His contract the way he's been playing for us, the way he plays off the bench, instant impact, the defense that he gives you. There's no reason to trade Deuce at this point in time. And I'll be completely honest here. There's no reason for the Knicks to make any trade at this point in time. Number one, they can't. But number two, as I said earlier in the video, we are starting to look like a better team. We are moving the ball and moving ourselves. And we're going to get more players back in the next few weeks. Achua, he's going to come back. Mitchell Robinson. He's coming back. Landry Shamit. once that shoulder heals, the Knicks are going to re-sign him, and he's going to be back on the Knicks bench. Deuce McBride, who has missed the last few games with a left knee inflammation, he's going to come back at some point in time for the Knicks as well, too. We are going to be fully healthy. And once fully healthy, we're going to have the players that potentially a lot of us want us to trade for right now. We want another big inside with Carl Anthony Towns. Preston Chua and Mitchell Robinson, we could potentially use those two players to do that. Once they return and they're back and they're healthy, we don't need to make a trade to do that. Right now, I think the Knicks should hold on to their assets and continue to read the market, see what players potentially are going to be available at the deadline. And then as we get closer to December 15th, the date that we can actually make a move happen, we should see what we need, if anything, do we actually need to make a move at that point in time? And if we do, what are we willing and what are we comfortable in giving up to make that move happen? I hope it's not Deuce McBride because right now, Deuce and Campaign seem to be the only impactful players off of our bench. And as we know, in the NBA right now, the Knicks, as we're ranked, have the worst scoring bench in the league. We have to get better with that. The only ways to do that is to get healthier, expand the rotation, and have more players on this roster that Tom Thibodeau trusts, that he'll extend minutes to, and they can have an impact in those minutes that they have on the court. I'm looking at Achua for that. I'm looking at Robinson for that. I'm looking at Deuce McBride for that. We're missing a lot of players right now, but once we get healthy, we'll know the full extent of this team and what we're capable of. You can make the argument that right now, we're not even playing at full strength and we're looking like a good team each and every game. Once we start getting back those physical players that we need on this team, right next to Carl Anthony Towns, we might look like an even better team. A team that doesn't need to make a trade, but instead, a team that needs to gel even more, work together even more, get in the gym and practice together even more. Because once the chemistry is there and the defense comes together, we're going to look like the team I thought we were going to look like to enter this season. Unstoppable. For a couple of possessions, 
sometimes for a full quarter at times, you'll see what this Knicks team can really look like on defense and on offense, when we're shutting players down, suffocating defense, and we're moving the ball, moving ourselves, cutting inside, and just watching the magic happen. This has been some of the best ball movement and the best Nick offense that I've seen over the last few games. The only issue we have is defense. Once we get a Chua back, once we get Robinson back, once we get a couple of these key players back, will defense still be the issue? That's going to be the big question. Because if it isn't, maybe the Knicks don't make a trade. Maybe they look at the buyout market. Or if they do consider making a trade, maybe it's a smaller level trade that helps this team but doesn't separate all the core players that we want on this roster. We're going to have to wait and see what Leon Rose and this Knicks front office is going to do, but it's clear. They are monitoring the market and monitoring what this team does. And if they continue to hover around 500 like we are right now, we're obviously 8-6, and six, then I can see the Knicks making another major move. The only question is, what player are they going to target? What move are they going to make? And what assets are they going to feel comfortable with giving up at that time to get another player on this team? The only person who knows the answer to that question right now is Leon Rose. And spoiler alert, he's not going to tell anybody anything until the move happens. It's already been announced. And at that point, we're all going to look at each other and be shocked. Just like we were with OG, just like we were with Mikel, just like we were with Cat. Every move that Leon Rose makes, he makes close to his chest, close to the vest. He doesn't really tell anybody until the move already happens. And at some points, you gotta love that about Leon Rose. We don't know until he wants us to know. The NBA won't know until he wants them to know. And that right there is the makings of a great Knicks front office. And that's exactly what we have. But what about you guys? What do you think about the following reports indicating that if the Knicks continue to hover around 500, they could be more open to making a move? And if they make a move, some of the trade pieces that they have that they might include in a trade at the deadline could be Mitchell Robinson, Preston Achua, and to an extent, Deuce McBride. Let me know how you feel about that in the comments section below, guys, because honestly, I would love to hear from you. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans, take care of yourself, your families, and each other. Peace and love.